Hey guys, and uh, welcome to a new tutorial from Organian's Puzzle Box. So recently I've been working on my World Forge landscape auto material, and I thought, right, it would be quite cool if I can implement a post-process sharpen material, um, so I can actually control the sharpness of my environment based on the camera view. So I'm going to show you guys how to set up a material very quickly, so we can get a nice decent effect for our sharpness material. And if I actually go and have a look at increasing the sharpness, you can see that cranking it up to the maximum, this is what we get. Now, obviously, this is a bit too much, you know, a value of a, a maximum value that I've gone through here. This is not the maximum per se, but it's like, you know, a value from zero to one. Uh, earlier, we were at a value of zero and now we're at a value of one. But if I switch this to maybe like a 0 0.4, you can see that we're getting quite, some, quite a nice effect of the sharpness. I'm not sure how visible this is on, um, on the YouTube page, but it's definitely a very, very clearly visible effect within the viewport that I'm looking at. So yeah, let's just uh, start doing it. It should be quite simple and straightforward. First things first, let's actually make the material. So I'm going to create a new material over here into my content browser. I'm going to call this M Sharpen EP from post process. I'm then going to double click it to open it. And then over here, I'm going to bring it over into the main view. And the first thing we want to do is we want to set this up as a post process material. So we do this over here where it says material domain, switch over to post process, and that's it. Now, the next thing we want to do is start connecting stuff into the emissive color. Now, the first thing we want to do is bring in a scene texture. And then this one, we've got to make sure that we set it up as the post process input zero, because we're just going to run with one post process. We're not doing multiple post process materials. So we're just doing this one as an input zero. Now, I'm going to duplicate this uh, five more times or something like that. Um, so then we're going to keep two here at the front and then we're going to bring two these four all the way here at the back. We're going to work our way on the material from the left to the right. So, you know, we end up over here effectively. OK, now the next thing we want to do is start adding some values. So we will need a texture coordinate and you can actually bring this by holding U and left clicking. So this will bring us a texture coordinate node. And then we also want to add in some add nodes. So hold A on the keyboard and left click and this will add an add node, at which point we can actually duplicate this. Uh, Wait, where's my duplication? We can duplicate it four times. We need to have four of these nodes effectively. So we're going to put them something like that. Now, the next thing we want to do is we want to get this texture coordinate node and input it in all the B values of this add node. OK, so just quickly do this like that, because we're, all of this is going to feed in the UV of these scene texture post processing that we added. But we can actually connect these into the UVs just like that. Uh, we do need an individual UV, you know, add nodes because we are going to do calculations uh, on each, each of them, you know, on their own. So let me just uh, get these to straighten up a little bit like that. OK, now we want to add some a free uh, scalar um, sort of value. So we're going to hold one and left click. So we're going to keep this one at a value of zero. Then we're going to add another one in here and we're going to put this to a 0 0.001. Actually, sorry, 0 0.001 like that. And then we're going to add another one here, which this is going to be a negative value. So we're going to do minus 0 0.001. OK, now the negative value, we are going to connect it into the first. Well, we're going to connect them into some um, append nodes first. So what we're going to do is add append, not append many, but append vector. And we will need four of these as well. So we're going to create four of them drop them in like that you can see there okay and now we want to connect these values over into these append nodes and then connect them into the add nodes i know it sounds a bit uh, tricky on the <laughs> how many words of add and append we're using in here okay now to get them in check the first uh value zero th this one where it says zero we're going to put this into the a value of these two appends and then the next one is going to be in the b value of these two other appends just like that OK, now this particular value of 0 0.001, we're going to connect it to the B value of the first one and then the B value of the A value over here. And then this other one, the negative one is going to connect in the B value of this append and in the A value of this append. Now over here is quite straightforward. We just link them like that very quickly. Oh, sorry, I messed this up. This one goes in here. 
and this one goes in here so it's effectively uh, following you know one to one right left to right so we have that we do need to feed into these uvs as well so we're going to drag the texture coordinate node like that we can actually double click here to add a another node and we're going to also connect it over oh sorry didn't want to add a divide we're going to connect it over in here as well okay now with that done we need to put all of these together these scene textures together so we're going to add two add nodes in here and a third one like that obviously these two will connect into this main one and then we want to take the color of this and in the second color of this one put it in like that and then this one into the a and b value there now we have these scene textures uh which at which point we need to also add these together so i'm going to add another add node in here the first one we're going to actually use for uh, multiplying a bit of color grading let's call it in a desaturation in a desaturation node so i'm going to put a desaturation node in here connect the color over into this particular uh, value we don't actually have to you know we, we can leave that uh, as is for now but we are going to connect the desaturation over into the a value and then the color of this scene texture into the b value over here this then can go into the emiss emissive color now if we just uh, apply the material as is so if we apply this and go back into the into here you what you need to do is you need to add a post process volume so just type in oh, post uh why is it not showing up oh there we go pose it's in visual effects post process volume and add it into the scene make sure that you have infinite extent turned on so you can find down here so just press that infinite extent once you do that then you will have an option in here where it says material but i always am struggling to find this option so it's somewhere into the rendering features in post process materials so over here where it says array just press on the plus button then it says choose so you've got to choose to asset reference okay and then in in this slot here you want to add newly created material so i'm just going to drop it in there now you can see it's already having an effect of sharpness and also a bit of um, you know desaturation of the scene but this is not exactly what we want we want to be able to control this effect so we're going to go back into our material and add the rest of the nodes so from this add point in here that we did we can actually add a divide node so we can connect the add to divide and we want to divide this by a number so i'm just going to add a scalar parameter and call this color um desaturation and i'm going to put this into the b value in here and then we from this particular uh node we want to subtract uh, the color so I'm going to add a subtract node so we're going to put this color into the a value and then this divide into the b value now we do want to at this point to control the level of sharpness just imagine this is where we're you know like we're controlling the sharpness uh, for this whole system so I'm going to add a multiply node by holding m and left click I'm going to add the subtract node over in here but I do need to add a value to the b value so I'm going to add a scalar parameter and I'm going to call this sharpness amount and we're going to leave these at the default value of this is going to be like a 0 0.5 and this is going to be a value of 4 as defaults i'm going to put this into the b value then this multiply will go into the desaturation node and now we can press apply again we go back into our scene over here you'll notice that if we actually switch from 1 to 0 the effect disappears or reappears but we would be able to control this through a material instance. So if we go over here into our content browser, right click, create material instance, there we have it. Now we can drop this into the slot of the post process. And if we open the material instance like that, let me just drag it over so we can see it in our level. You'll notice that we only have two options, which is a color desaturation and a sharpness amount. Now, if I increase this number, we obviously are adding a lot of sharpness to the scene. And if I decrease it, I'm actually going the other way. I could sort of like cause a blur, but obviously this has some trade-offs because if you blur too much, you will just become weird as well. So leaving that to a 0 0.5 is fine. Now the color desaturation here, we can actually toy around with this setting as well. And you'll notice that you can get some interesting effects with this as well. It's darkening the scene. It's, uh, you know, like 
of changing the saturation of the colors as well making them very saturated now but as i said it's also darkening the scene this is an interesting sort of effect on the sky box around as well where i've got the atmos forge active but i would definitely leave this to a value of four as the default you can also sort of like go very high so maybe like a 20 is also going to give you an interesting effect and maybe you can turn the desaturation to actually turning the desaturation to zero means that you're not getting the effect at all from the sorry the sharpness amount so you might want to add a bit of sharpness in there in order to you know catch a glimpse of that effect uh so maybe 0 0.5 something like that we just press play just to have a little bit of uh play in the scene and yeah this is a it's an interesting look isn't it but definitely you know an added layer of complexity to your scene depending what for what sort of effect you're going for so i hope you guys enjoy the tutorial and i hope you learned something this is how straightforward this is i am going to link this material in the description below just so you can get it and you can just use it straight away in your in your projects but uh, yeah feel free to comment like and subscribe thank you to all the patrons thank you to people who support me and i'll see you guys in the next one keep creating